Baltimore, Maryland. It was a turbulent spring of 2015. Peaceful protesters took the streets to denounce police brutality. So did violent rioters. It made us think, are minorities disadvantaged because of social and economic hurdles? Is the situation made worse by a flawed justice system? Where I come from, you're really basically a product of the environment. And if you hang around people that sell drugs and get money all day, that's what you're going to want to do. You see everybody getting money, and then you see how easy it is, why not? Low-income communities have fewer job opportunities, sometimes leading youth to unlawful actions. I was hanging out with too many friends that insisted of doing illegal stuff as robbery and theft. And we ended up robbing some houses one night for the first time. And there was like merchandise. Cops showed up on left and right. And they questioned me. And I had like a bunch of credit cards in my back pocket. And then they just took me in. And they found out that all those credit cards was from around the area. So they were stolen. And I got into the system. Tyree and Gio have moved in and out of Maryland's juvenile justice system. They're trying to escape the environments from where they came. The influence is really hard to escape, both in the streets and at the home. We got the chance to meet with Maryland's Attorney General, Brian Frosch. We're creating a documentary about the juvenile justice system here in Maryland. It's a really complicated uh, issue, as you know. Education is a factor, public safety is a factor, and the economy right. is a factor as well. How do you see this issue? I think the main thing is that we do poorly when we put kids in detention. We put them in effectively a jail. But if you're locking them up, you're asking for trouble. In July of 2015, President Obama visited the El Reno Federal Prison to meet with inmates and talk about needed reforms to the justice system. These are young people who made mistakes that aren't that different than the mistakes I made and the mistakes that a lot of you guys made. Uh, the difference is they did not have the kinds of support structures, the second chances, the resources uh, that would allow them to survive those mistakes. We were shocked to discover the inequity of those resources. One example, the state of Maryland spent $38,383 per inmate in 2013 but spent on average $13,829 per student in K-12. There are a lot of other things this money could be spent on. Every dollar they have to spend keeping nonviolent drug offenders in prison is a dollar they can't spend going after drug kingpins or tracking down terrorists or hiring more police and giving them the resources that would allow them to do a more effective job community policing. Although President Obama brings up great points about the needs of police officers, community policing requires trust, a mutual trust between the people and the police. But with the events that have happened recently, young people, particularly young minorities, have lost that trust. With security cameras and smartphones everywhere, we are witnessing more and more accounts of police brutality. It is no surprise that there's a mistrust between law enforcement and minority communities. 69% of Marylanders who died in police encounters were black, yet black people make up only 29% of Maryland's population. To make matters worse, 41% of Marylanders who died in police encounters were not armed with a weapon of any kind. I think it's because police are judgmental people. Like, you know, just because they see, just because they keep locking up a person that dresses like me, and like, you know, talks like me, they're gonna think I'm the same as them, you know what I'm saying? But in reality, I got a different mentality as them, you know? I'm trying to move forward, they're trying to destroy their lives in different ways. I think 99% of the folks who are policing our streets are, are well-intentioned, doing the best they can. Uh, they have very dangerous jobs. You know, there are 300 plus million guns in private hands in the, in the United States. If you're a policeman and you're not worried about your individual safety, you're out of your, you're out of your mind. 
When we started this documentary, we wanted to speak to youth that are currently in the juvenile justice system. Unfortunately, Maryland's Department of Juvenile Services denied us access to their detention centers. What do kids really need to survive and thrive, knowing that so much more money is spent on a person when he's in jail than when he's in a classroom? Based on the kids we spoke with and our own perspectives, it seems that young people need more after-school activities to keep them busy and out of trouble. The money spent on out-of-school programs would reduce crime, keep neighborhoods safe, and provide enriching experiences for youth who need them the most. Keep kids busy. You could lower, you could get kids like little community jobs, like the um, youth works. That helps out kids a lot. So just something to keep kids busy. That way, they don't got no time to get in trouble. The peak time for juvenile crimes are the hours immediately after school. Were there any after-school activities that you were involved in in the past? No, not really. And that's one advice I would love to give people because activities help you stay away from the negativity. Despite the need for more resources, there's still hope. As we see young adults take charge of their lives and turn around their mistakes to become working members of society. But you know, now that it, like, I grew older, I want to be a mechanic, like I want to be able to get my diploma, go into college and you know study the mechanics. So like in the future I could be able to make my own design model. I hope this year is so successful. That's what I'm, I'm trying to, I'm going to, I can't say try, I'm going to try to um, get a business license. I'm going to open up a business in the, um, in the community, give people an opportunity to get a job. We learned that every child deserves the opportunity to grow up in a safe neighborhood and receive a good education. And if a youth is arrested for a crime, he or she deserves to be treated fairly by the police and court system. Growing up today is complicated. We need to work together to fix these problems. It's a matter of life and death.